Today, I am in Glasgow, outside of St. Enoch Station, and I am going to be riding the Glasgow subway for myself for the first time. So without further ado, let's go! So they give you paper tickets, yet you still like sort of tap them contactlessly on the ticket machines, which really threw me off and confused me for a second. <laughs> Now, just so that my journey isn't, like, 15 minutes or whatever, how small the line is, I don't quite know for sure, but so it isn't, like, 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to get off for every stop as well, take a look around, see what we got. First impressions-wise, it's... It definitely is like the Tube's younger brother. Arriving at Bridge Street Station was when I noticed that the platforms for the inner and outer circles are colour-coded with the station signage. Grey for inner, orange for outer. I thought that was pretty cool. Also, notice how the track gauge is 4 foot as opposed to the standard 4 foot 8 and a half, which means smaller than usual trains. Next stop on the line was West Street, which has yellow walls instead of grey, and is a bit taller inside. Yeah. Moving on. One thing I must say from being in these couple of stations so far is that the brakes are ear-splittingly loud, and I hope that improves with the next generation trains that should be coming next year. The next station was Shields Road. I'm beginning to notice a bit of a pattern here. Because of several stations being rather similar, I decided I'd skip Kinning Park and Cessnock. So next stop is Ibrox. This is a nice deviation in arrangement from the other stations. Seems that only the inner line is on an island platform. This is kind of funny. I don't know if there's only, like, one train in this, like, vintage celebrating 120 years livery, but this has now come around for the second time already. So, clearly they only have, like, a few individual trains per ring, but yeah, so I've already been lapped by one. So this station is Goven? I'm probably pronouncing that wrong knowing me. Yeah, so there's seven stations after this, and there's been seven stations before us, so we're officially half done. You know, I thought the station was called Patrick for a second, but no. It's Partick. I was about to make a This Is Patrick joke. <laughs> oh god, that would have been terrible. I think I've seen the not-in-service train about three times now. Because Kelvin Hall, the station after Partick, was just yet another simple island platform station, I decided I'd skip straight forward to Hillhead. The platforms for this station are on a slant. Interesting. Leaving Hillhead now, our next stop is Kelvin Bridge, which seems to have a wider island platform than the previous stations. Perhaps the station gets more passengers, maybe? I don't know, let me know in the comments if you have an answer. This is Cow Cannons. It's yet another island platform. But it's green. So it is one stop to Buchanan Street now, I believe. According to that map, yes. Uh, one stop to Buchanan Street, which is the most used Glasgow subway station, I believe. So arriving at Buchanan Street, that ticks off all the subway stops. So I decided, just for fun, to switch to the inner platform and time how long it takes to do a full loop. The people at Glasgow Subway say it should take about 24 minutes, and, well, for me, it took just over 23. Pretty good. 
And with that, that concludes my visit to the Glasgow subway. I had a great time here and was definitely worth the visit. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.